Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and my company is called Arrow's Coaching. That's E-R-O-S, coaching.com. I work with individuals and couples in uh, all topics relating to sexuality, including uh, most of the time with uh, couples who cannot have sex, do not how to know how to have sex, and um, ha- uh, basically have difficulties consuming, consummating their marriage. Today's uh, show, we have my ex-classmate, Dr. Liam Captain Snowden, and uh, the title of today's show is Building Your Sexual Solidarity Team. Where do we place our attention in 2016 if we are invested in our collective erotic liberation. How can we play and celebrate failure as a way of decolonizing sexual, sex, sex, spiritual bodies and minds? How can we rub up against that will change the world? So more about uh, my guest, Dr. Liam Captain Snowden co-teaches both the Canadian and American sexological body worker training. If you don't know about it, it's actually a very prestigious training that I've gone through. He is also on the faculty of the Institute for Sexual Education and Enlightenment in Hartford, Connecticut. In his private practice, he delights in working with motivated individuals and folks in a variety of relationship configurations to give them tools to communicate their desires, practice their boundaries, express their genders, and change their lives. Captain has had great success working online, face-to-face, and in groups. He offers packages of sessions, homework, and erotic adventure assignments that require commitment and have life-changing results. He has a long history working in kink, LGBTQ, and poly communities. He lives in Victoria, Canada, where he runs Spark, the sexual the Sex Positive Art and Recreation Center. He can be found up and down the west coast of Canada and the U.S. giving talks, playing with sidewalk chalk and looking for the next watering hole. You can find him on capstonsnowden.ca. That's a Snowden, S-N-O-W-D-O-N. So you can check out his website as we continue with the show. So welcome to the show, Captain. Thank you so much. It's great. It's great to be here with you again, Martha. Thank you. So we were ex Gumi and um, this really has been the first time that we saw each other face to face just before the show on Skype, and he looks gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. It is really, really sexy. So, um, what do you mean by um, sexual solidarity team? Like today, that's the topic of the show, and this is the first time I came across this term. Well, um, you, the, the concept of sort of a, of a solidarity team um, came through this fabulous um, supervisor, who, uh, a, a woman who supervises therapists in Vancouver um, named Vicki Reynolds. And she talked to us a lot about um, having a solidarity team as a therapist or as a frontline worker um, so that we can like reduce isolation in the work that we do so we can – hold ourselves accountable to the populations that we work with and so that we can also, you know, remember the dead and remember who has, who has come before us and is there holding our backs and, and our, our descendants that are pu- pulling us forward in the work. So I just, I took this concept, um, and borrowed this concept from Vicky and started thinking about like, um, the fact that I think we all need, uh, a sexual solidarity team, like a group of people, you know, live, dead, imaginary, um, not necessarily people, you know, could could be plants, could be trees. Definitely for me, the ocean is part of my sexual solidarity to- team. It's like a group of beings that we can imagine are, you know, invested in um, 
invested in our eros and our and our life force energy because I think a lot of us you know sort of have have a small team if we if we're partnered with one person especially if we're heterosexual it's like this is the person who is on my sexual solidarity team this is the person I go to to have my needs met um and which is all like no matter how good a relationship it is it's really hard for for one person to meet one other person's all of another person's needs so i can get really excited about you know gathering encouraging people and training people and myself gathering a group of willing people and beings that are that want to hold me accountable and help me um find adventures go on adventures um some of the people maybe my my ex lovers my current partners um definitely some of my um my ex partners are like really really strong members of my um my solidarity team now that some time has passed and we're really now invested again in each other's erotic life and life force energy um and i also think you know coming from because this show is also about spirituality like it doesn't have to be people who are really you know actually exists sometimes when i think about my sexual solidarity team i like i think of a a sexually liberated version of my mother like what what she could have been if she had had some education if she had some support around around sex so um that's sort of my a bit of my vision about this people who will advocate people who will call us on stuff um people will, that will help us notice patterns that we're in that we don't want to be in I think you know maybe one one can I tell one cute story about yeah, sure. about this so um I have a I have a friend who was really clear that uh, what they felt like that they missed on in their, out on their sexual development a bit was um was sort of high school makeout parties like the high school makeout party and that that ne- never having had a chance to attend one of those kind of things was really uh really got in the way of of their sexual development. Mm-hmm. So, um we got together and made a plan and gathered a group of people at a spiritual gathering um and had like a well-boundaried, a well-consented, a well-explained um uh high school makeout party. Mm-hmm. Um you know, which involved spin the bottle and a couple other games that at the end, you know, left everybody feeling like they had practiced their boundaries, had some fun and left my friend feeling like hey that helps to complete some of the stuff that you know, I didn't get to do along the way. So I think that's something that you know we can do for other people um being on their sexual solidarity team or their erotic solidarity team. That's really awesome. I love that story, the high school makeout party. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get a closet? <laughs> We um there was bunk beds. We used bunk beds as a closet. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Oh my god, it's really really cute. I <laughs> I I now now I get the idea of your sexual solidarity dot se- sexual solidarity team. I I I get this and I think it's a good idea. I think as a sexologist, I would be on the team of a lot of people and you as well. Uh I I see myself being a informal a uh, person on the team for my friends but I don't think I get the kind of credit or acknowledgement that I deserve. So mm. I'm going to go and tell them you don't realize I'm on your team. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. And actually that was one of the reasons why I became a sexologist because I was surrounded with friends who people consider frigid or low sex drive or not enjoying sex and I was like I want to help my friends. I don't know how. Yeah. And that's really what got me thinking I want to do this work. Awesome. Yeah, I think this is one way sort of to form, you know, to formalize that process a bit. Um you can have new know, gatherings of your of your the you know, the live members of your sexual solidarity team. You could have like check-in phone calls with people. Um Yeah, and just and sort of reduce the isolation of what it's like to be, you know, a sexual being um in in this world. I think this could really help. Mm. I mean, there's also I mean, just along the lines of imaginary p- people too. I think about, you know, you know, those 
bracelets, like what would Jesus do? I, I, you know, I kind of think about, you know, people on my, on my sexual solidarity team, like if I'm feeling nervous about a particular situation that I'm in, but I'm still like nervous and titillated and want to do something and want to move forward with it. I would think, I, I think like, what would so-and-so do in this situation? And that would sort of help me. And also, I think, you know, I've got like some poets, I've got like Leonard Cohen and um, some other poets that I really admire on my, my solidarity team. And, and, you know, I think, oh, what is this huge feelings of heartbreak that I'm going through? Well, what would this person on my team do with it? Oh, well, they would write poems. Maybe I'll write some poems. <laughs> I think that's really great. You basically channel wisdom from other places. And uh, I don't know, we're coming up to, for a break, but I was really wondering like, what some of the weird, uh, or, you know, some of the cool things that they uh, have suggested that you wouldn't have otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, the... The overwhelming message that I keep getting from like every member of my solidarity team because they're starting to know me really well is gather people, gather people, gather people. Because when I get isolated in it, that's when when it, things don't go well for me around my eroticism and my sexuality. Mm. I like what you shared just now uh, about your ex partners who uh, now become on your team because they they know you and then they are like your biggest cheerleaders. Mm hmm. Especially when enough time has passed that we've been able to work things out, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a pity sometimes when we uh, cut off our ex partners from our lives because, you know, that there, there is still love and yeah. So we'll talk more about uh, sexual solidarity team after this break. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living, where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. change the world if you're broke. I know, I've tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, 
welcome back to Arrows Evolution. We are with Dr. Liam Captain Snowden and we are talking about how you can build your sexual solidarity team today. And you can find him on captainsnowden.ca. That's uh, Snowden, S-N-O-W-D-O-N. And he has another website. That's somaticsupervision.ca. You want to check out that website as well for the awesome work that he is doing. So just before break, we were defining and explaining what sexual solidarity team is about. And essentially, it's about visualizing in your mind's eye people dead or alive, imaginary and uh, beings that are on your team, backing you up, supporting you with your sexuality. Kind of like what some people have in their mind's eye, a mastermind. Um, that uh, they go for advice and this is a sexual team Uh, so captain i was just curious when you talked about this team are there any other ways you can apply this uh, concept that you have yeah and and definitely i just wanted to speak to that website that you just announced so um, that website somatic supervision is um is my website and services offering around um, supervision for people who do different kinds of somatic work. Um, so a place to talk about um, how it's going with clients, what the challenges are, how you want to move your business forward. Um, what are some of, what are some of the blocks? Where where is it really juicy? How can we how can we make it more of what of what you love and less of the things that you don't? So that's that's that work there. So right. So what you're saying is that website is for people who actually do a body based work, and you support them in their work. Absolutely. Awesome. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So on your other question, I think that um, the you know what what uh, what are the other applications of a sexual solidarity team? I mean, my my answer really is like whatever you can think of. Um, you know, I, I you just you just in just asking me that question, I've thought like, wow, wouldn't it be a thing if one has had a sexual solidarity team for so long that those are the people who stand up for them at their wedding? <laughs> Like, wow, like a whole community invested in the couple or the triad or the person in whatever arrangement they're in that's making a commitment, you know, that that, those people are already in sort of in the circle of that. The other pieces that I think about, which is, you know, which a wedding is, um, which is something I've never had, but um, uh, is is the how I really feel and... um, A lot of my friends from various cultures, we talk a lot about how we're missing so many rites of passage now. And I think a sexual solidarity team can really help us um, develop rituals around um, places of, you know, uh, that we want movement in our life, you know, whether it's like setting up a ritual where we actually jump from one side of something to another um, or work with work with liminality or work with the places in between things and and notice in our bodies where we want to go whether we're you know go whether we burn we're burning things whether we're you know all the all the alchemy that can be done in order to to move things or bring things in or shift shift energies in our bodies and our lives and I think a small group of people that is committed to you know each other's erotic expression, um, can really, you know, serve in that way too. I really appreciate what you're sharing because even though you just said this in a very short amount of time, it's actually, there's a lot of depth and richness in all your ideas. Really, really uh, beautiful. I just want to... Guess- com- yeah, sorry. So I was just going to say, and, and uh, before it starts to sound too... Um, uh, Pollyanna kind of ish. I really, the other thing that I'm really invested in these days and, and have, um, I've really learned from a lot of Aboriginal and, and First Nations folks in my life that have taught me is, you know, the, um, the, the perfectionism and perfection has been a really colonizing force that wasn't here, at least on the land that, um, that my forefathers and mothers came and invaded and took over. You know, there wasn't all this be- these big concepts of things needing to be perfect and stuff. So I'm really excited about the work that, you know, that we can do around sexuality and in sexual solidarity teams around celebrating failure, right? And celebrating how we failed um, and, and celebrating how we flailed 
and celebrating how things have been messy because like messiness is interrelatedness in the world, right? Um, perfection is usually when we're just, when we're on our own. So I, so I'm really excited about, uh, uh, you know, f figuring out ways of like decolonizing our bodies and our minds and our spirits by doing these things so in community and being, you know, accountable to the people of the lands that we're, that we're living on and doing, and doing our work on. I, I, maybe you can explain a little bit more what uh, decolonizing means because, you know, I, I don't really understand this term. Sure, absolutely. And, and, you know, I am, I am learning all the time too. So I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about is, um, is bringing into awareness and noticing and moving things out of our body that are forces that, uh, have been put on our bodies that we haven't that we haven't made choices to have those things happen. So I think there's a you know there's a lot of stuff that that um, the media you know and body image and that men should look this way and women should look this way and uh, and all the, that kind of basic stuff. But I also think especially on the land that that I live on, like you know ever since the, the colonizers came over here, there hasn't been any consent culture. So. Um, when we talk, we talk a lot, a lot about consent and we have to put it in sort of the context of, of that everything that is happening on this land is in, is non-consensual too. So, um, so working in our solidarity teams, like, n and noticing that like the systemic things that are happening, um, and being able to like break down and, and work with each other in ways that like all our liberation is possible and not just the person who's sort of called the solidarity team. So, um, that's the part for me about, you know, 20 in 2016, how can we, uh, like invest in our collective erotic liberation and not just the erotic liberation of people that have enough money to go to retreats and, uh, and pay for, pay for, uh, like long-term coaching and counseling. Like how can we, and I think the solidarity team is a way that we can show up for each other um, that won't be as quite as expensive and, and show up for each other in all the different ways that we can in the world. Mm. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you do often with your clients? Yeah, well, I'm always trying to get my clients to, um, like from the moment that I meet my client, I'm trying to, uh, make sure that they don't get hooked into an experience with me that everything that we're doing is, is going to get them more of what they want out in the world. So I definitely work with them to like identify who, who's on their team, mm -hmm. um, around, around sex and who they can, who, who they can talk to and who might, you know, especially with men, you know, I found that my work with men has been a lot about saying, you know, is it possible that you could go and talk to your dad about how sex was for him? And is like, is there something you could learn there and how could he be of a support and how, you know, just like really expanding out the support so that people don't feel like they're so, they're so, they're so alone um, on their journeys around sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things that uh, happens to lots of people is that they feel because sex is a sensitive subject or taboo subject, they cannot talk to anyone. So having this team uh, makes them uh, feel uh, very much more supported, I imagine. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's all a big experiment, like everything in life and, and uh, parts of it will work and parts of it won't and take what you like and leave the rest. Mm. Thank you. I, I love what you're sharing about uh, also uh, you were saying how life and, and things can get messy and it's all interrelated and the importance of celebrating failure. I think we can be too hard on ourselves and we see something that ends as failure, like for instance, a relationship or marriage. Yeah, I completely agree. I had some really smart friend of mine in our early 20s he said, I was like, when, I'm like, can we go have coffee? And he said, okay. And we went and had coffee. And I'm like, my relationship ended. And he, or I said, I another unsuccessful relationship. And he said, mm. did you have a relationship? I said, yeah. He said, then it's not unsuccessful. You had a relationship. It's like, oh. Mm. It's not a time span that makes something successful. It's the fact that it existed. And so that's kind of stuck with me a little bit. 
I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, even the fact that um, the there was a commitment uh, to love, mm-hmm. that says quite a bit. Agreed. Mm. Yeah, that day I was having a conversation with another friend of mine and I, I say we don't realize what we're actually doing when we uh, reach over, like say, at a pub and we tap someone on the shoulder and say, hey, bro, you're cool. I like you. Mm. We're actually letting that person into our hearts. We're actually saying, I love you. <laughs> Just acknowledgement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I also liked what you were sharing about uh, um, your mom. Um, I I think of my mom as somebody who's on my team, even mm-hmm. though a lot of people are quite squeamish, talking about their parents and imagining mm-hmm. them being sexual. I think uh, knowing that my mom was has always been quite positive about her sexuality actually makes me feel that she gave me a lot of permission to be sexual. So I like to think of her as uh, being on my team and always wanting me to have a full and happy life. Mm. So I definitely uh, see and pick up on the modeling that my mom does, even unconsciously. Awesome. Sounds like you got lucky in the mother department. Um, in some ways, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in some ways, yes. Yay. <laughs> So we're talking about a sexual solidarity team with Dr. Liam Captain Snowden, and he actually teaches the Canadian and also American sexological bodywork training. He was just mentioning just before um, with me that the Cana- Canadian training starts on April 18. This is a very intensive training that will change your life. Whether you're planning to do it as a profession or as an individual, this is life transforming. You may want to check out his website, captainsnowden.ca. And we'll talk more with him after this break. Feed your soul. With Waves of Consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, Mediumship Messages and Musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the show. You are listening to Home Times Radio Network. Hang on. <laughs> you are listening to Eros Evolution on the Home Times Radio Network and you can share the show with your friends right now by sending them the link ometimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. And as we know, some apps are not compatible with Android and uh, this makes it really easy and convenient for everyone concerned. Just before the break, I was talking about how Captain is going to be starting the Canadian Sexological Bodywork Training. And you can find out the details by going to somatic sex educators dot c a. That's right, Captain. <laughs> You betcha. Or just <laughs> yeah, or just Google sexological body work, and you'll be able to find uh, all all the different trainings all over the world. Cool. And you also have another website, CaptainStudent.ca, and uh, people will be able to find you as well on Facebook. You betcha. Yeah, the American the American training. We're just just about to start um, module one of the American training. I think we've got a couple spots left um, in it, and it starts February first, and then the Canadian training starts on April. 18th and uh, we're interviewing a lot for that now so I get to teach with some amazing amazing folks in both of those trainings you are amazing as well <laughs> thank you yeah I'm very very happy that I I met you at the Institute and uh, we did sex bot together um, the training and then uh, I also met uh, Deech in that training and he runs the program for Australia so I feel very very honored and very connected and it was just completely coincidental the universe just brought me there at the right time helped me to meet the right people and uh, now you guys are um, you know my my uh, my uh, uh, inspiration I do think of you guys uh, quite a bit doing amazing work back at you yeah isn't it it's just so interesting like there's so many amazing people Annie Sprinkle and Carol Queen and um, my friend Terry Chalky who is um, really one of the people at the centerpieces of the um, the work around uh, ecosexuality she said to me I don't know how many years ago now maybe 15 Captain what the hell is up with you and sex anyway and that was just that kind of started all of it Right, mm -hmm. just like one person asked this question, point blank, and sort of everything cascaded from there. So I, you know, I'm so grateful for community and friends and people calling me out on stuff. Yeah. So for for listeners out there, you know, um, um, sex bot obviously did uh, quite a lot for me in my personal uh, transformation, uh, personally and professionally. How has uh, sex bot, uh, sexological body work, uh, um, um, helped you or support you in your um, sexual exploration? Ooh, good question. Um, so when I, when I was going to school getting my doctorate in human sexuality, I uh, people were like, okay, you got to take the sexological bodywork training. You got to take so um, taking the sexological bodywork training was like my gift to myself for finishing my doctorate. So and as soon as I started reading the materials and practicing the work, I was like, oh, this is home. This stuff is in the body. This is, this is where I've always wanted to be able to go. I've always, you know, having been a counselor before that and working with street kids and working with other marginalized folks, I just, like, I knew talk would only get us so far and people telling their stories over and over and over again would only got, got things so far. So there being modalities out in the world where um, we can, we can, do consensual touch. We can teach people about their bodies. You know, myself as a transgender person who was who was born female um, and has transitioning. None of these words actually work for me, but it's but are, as um, somewhere around male now, um, which is a bit more comfortable. But I still believe there's as many genders as there are stars in the sky. But so so sexological body work, you know, helped me. You know, stay alive, stay in my body learn about my changing body, appreciate my body, um, and really sort of prioritize pleasure in my life um, and uh, learn how to really sort of like, I think about how sometimes we would never think about 
giving the keys to a car to someone who didn't know how to drive. But we do that with our bodies all the time. We're like, you're sexy. Here, you can have my body to do things with um, without like telling them how and what we like and and when we like it and when it changes if we like that. And so, so that's, I've learned all that, all that stuff. And I guess I think the reason that I stay, um, that I stay involved in sexological body work is it's, it's not one of those professions that you like go off and study and then you've got it kind of thing. It's like to be a good sexological body worker, to be a good somatic sex educator, you really need to stay on top of our stuff. Like we really need to like, uh, notice where shame is, crept back into our lives. Um, notice where we're, you know, maybe our masturbation habits are really, really entrenched again. And how can we expand out of that? How can we, you know, do some more orgasmic yoga, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, it's just sort of an ever unfolding process. Um, and it's really helped me to, to, um, to look at the, my own things that, that were traumatizing in my life and, and break some patterns. And, you know, for me, it's definitely, it's not like, teach what I'm an expert at. It's, you know, it's like teaching, teaching what I need to continually learn over and over again. And, and the people that are attracted to this profession just continually blow my mind. Most amazing, grounded, like edge walking, smart people. So that's why I keep staying involved. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Sex. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things that I got from sexological body work was um, the term orgasmic yoga, and that's what my second book is based on. And it really changed my life because I think as a Asian, I'm, I'm, I'm brought up in a very kind of uh, repressed uh, society. I really didn't see, I knew, I mean, I was comfortable enough um, with that, oh, okay, my sexuality is an important part of myself, but I really didn't give it that much attention uh, to pleasure. And uh, really, uh, the concept of uh, orgasmic yoga really uh, changed everything for me because there is no limit to the amount of pleasure we can have in our lives. And uh, sex bot really, uh, really... You know, shifted things in in a you know, it's not just an intellectual, but really in your body, and um, um, I guess that's why you you love it and why you're teaching it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything else uh, about Sexbot that you wanna um, talk about uh, or shout out to listeners out there? Hmm. One of my co-teachers. Um, uh, Kath and Jesse has written a really great book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, right at this moment, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, erotic massage for healing and something. Anyway, Kath and, Kath and Jesse. And it's, a, it's a re if you want to learn more about sexological body work, that's definitely, um, one place to go. Um, and also, uh, you know, the founder of, of all of this fabulous, um, uh, Psychological body work and um, the founder of um, Body Electric, uh, Joseph Kramer, his website, um, the New School of Erotic Touch, um, is another place to go to get to get more information. Um, but there's trainings all over the world. You know, all of them are. Um, we all have to have sort of like the basic curriculum, and, and as long as we, as long as we do do that part, we can um, we can bring in other pieces that we're excited about or are more important in our local areas or. You know, are more important to the to the people in the class. So, there the trainings are diverse, um, but you get sort of the ba all, all of the basics. So, mm. yeah. So next week I'm uh, going to be doing the show from Australia, Sydney, and I'll be uh, going to attend a really good sex festival. And uh, Deej uh, will be there, and uh, Joseph Kramer will be there. So I'm I'm really looking forward to meeting them. I haven't seen them for <laughs> years. Yay, that'll be great. Yeah. I'm so please send, send my love. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, so we have three more minutes to break. Uh, is, is there anything else you like to talk about? Hmm. I actually really want to ask you very quickly what you see as the link between sexuality and spirituality. Oh, yeah. Thank you for asking that. Um, I don't even think there's a link. I mean, I think they're the same. 
Mm. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think they might be one of the one side of the same coin. Um, uh, for me, for me at least, they are they are like intricately interwoven together. Um, good, like sex is life force energy. Spirit is life force energy. Um, I'm not saying that you can't have unspiritual sex or spirituality without sex, but um, the very best sexual moments of my life have also been very, very spiritual moments. And I think the the mashup and the dance and of eros and and pleasure and sex and and uh, ecstasy um, have all have all been um, sexual experiences and erotic experiences in my life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more? Uh, like, what happens when you have uh, unspiritual sex? Is that still uh, spiritual, even though it feels unspiritual? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. I I will. I would never claim to tell people like that their sex was a certain thing or another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I can only sort of speak from my experience, but, you know, as someone who is, um, as a, you know, an active member of, um, the reclaim, the reclaiming, uh, pagan and witchy tradition, um, and really, you know, centered in earth based spirituality, you know, I, the life force being, you know, not just from humans, but also being all around us all the time. I really feel that there's like ways that we can really, really expand into um, not just the energy that's coming from our genitals, right? Mm. So there's so much more that I think we're just we're just beginning to maybe remember that maybe our ancestors knew before mm. um, about uh, ecstasy and eros and our relationship to nature. Mm. Great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I love what you're saying. That we can expand energy from beyond genitals. And uh, we'll uh, talk more with Captain after this break. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Hey ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow letting you know she's feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author on The O-Spot, The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on The O-Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. Are you ready to shift your energy, consciousness, and limiting beliefs? Join me, Shafali Burns, every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Shifting with Shafali here on Om Times Radio. Shift the blocks, limitations, and negative energies that have kept you from experiencing a life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Are you ready to shift with Shafali? Are you ready to shine your brilliance? Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors. Connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution. We are into the last 15 minutes of our show and I am with Dr. Liam. 
Captain Snowden, and he actually writes his name or spells his name uh, in small caps, Captain. And uh, I was just wondering why. <laughs> so you can also check out his website, uh, CaptainSnowden.ca, and also his other website, which is uh, SumaticSexEducation.ca. And you definitely want to check out uh, more about SexBot, even if you are not planning to attend the training. There's a lot of lots of uh, books and materials uh, out there talking about sexological body work, uh, including uh, my second book, Orgasmic Yoga. So, uh, Captain, you got my book, Orgasmic Yoga. What did you think of it? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to put a plug in for it. I think. I think it is like. Um, a really great way for people to start thinking about outside of the box about ways that they can work um, and play like and play with you know their own sexual energy um, in ways that you know we're just not taught to do it so um, I think it's like a great book to like fold and not everybody likes to fold up books but I like to like fold up a book and put it in my back pocket you know, and travel around with it and kind of read it wherever I am and have it sort of inform everything I'm doing for a while. It feels like that kind of book to me. Oh, thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. So just to make sure that I don't miss out on this, that Captain does work with people online, face-to-face -face and in groups. So the, these are some ways that you can engage with him. He lives in Victoria, Canada, and he runs Spark. That's a sex positive art and recreation center for the last seven years in Canada. Um, what can I say? Um, one of the things um, uh, when I went to the institute was I met all these people who have different kinds of uh, sexuality than me and uh, who are just different from me. I consider myself very vanilla and I met uh, classmates who were identified as gays, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, uh, poly, and it was really an eye-opener. You don't realize what you don't know until you know. <laughs> and <laughs> you were one of the people that um, really influenced and shaped my thinking because you were transitioning at that time. And, uh, and uh, so tell, tell us a little bit um, how your gender journey has um, affected your erotic journey. Hmm. Awesome question. So um, some of it's really, really hard to pull apart. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely at the time we met, I was, um, I was, had been spending, I'd spent about a decade um, living in what looked like a female body and insisting to people that they use male, male pronouns for me and working in a job that, um, that was they only hired gay men for. So really sort of living and walking, you know, between the worlds and insisting that I was seen and treated in, in a certain way. Um, and I think around the time I went to school, I, I uh, started feeling more like I wanted to um, have chest surgery and or get, my, get my breasts removed. And um, sometime later decided um, I would try testosterone. It, was all, it, was a, it wasn't a quick process and it was a lot, a lot of thought put into all of it. Um, but, you know, I think some of the more entertaining things were it was like I was in school studying sex mm -hmm. um, full time, living in San Francisco, which is, you know, probably other than Amsterdam or some other places that I haven't been, probably like the greatest places to study sex because, you know, you can read about something during the day and then probably go out and find someone to do it with that night. <laughs> so I'm in school studying sex. I'm in San Francisco. I've started taking testosterone into my body. So people are like, people ask me, it's like, so how does your gender journey ch change your, your sexuality? I'm like, I don't know. I was getting sex education, good sex education at the time. I was being incredibly sexually explorative and I, you know, and I had a whole bunch of testosterone r running through my veins. So, uh, you know, it was a time, definitely a time of, um, being like, oh my gosh, this is what boys go through. This is what is running through their body, um, at you know, at the at those young young ages, and they have to find ways to cope to dealing with it. I could barely cope with it when, you know, I was uh, in my thirties. So, um, yeah, it was an intense time where I would you know kind of look at a chair and think it was sexy and be like, oh look at that chair, I'm really interested in. It. I'm like, it's a chair. I just yeah, I wanted to like kind of eat everything. Uh, have sex with everything and uh, and like run really hard 
and it all mellowed out after a while. But it was a really interesting thing to be doing while I was sort of getting a better sex education. But I think my my gender journey, um, just really like it, it, it really my continuing gender journey helps me just understand how how many different ways there are to be in the world around sex and gender and how they're all just really should be all just really really welcomed and um and people and people should be given love around all of the ways that we don't even know there is to be in the world yet um yeah i think that's probably the the biggest piece around it yeah i remember you were sharing about uh how the testosterone was really affecting your libido in mm. your sex drive. And then you were actually, I remember you talking about the chair, how yeah. to, to hump the chair. And I was yeah. like, whoa, I, I had no idea about the male-female differences because I am in a, a female body and I, I never un- really understood how different men were until you talked about the testosterone. And then I was like, okay, so... Uh, the hormones really changes our brains and our behavior. That was that yeah. was a big piece for me. Yeah, and I'm not willing to like. What I'm willing to say is that having testosterone put in my body made me act differently. Like I don't know what it's like for other people, but um, yeah, mm. it was it was cuckoo bananas for a while in there. Mm. <laughs> Great, thank you. Yeah, I uh, I I feel it's sometimes very sensitive to uh, talk to people who are transgender. I don't really know whether they are willing to talk about it and whether, you know, I'm also worried sometimes I, I use the wrong pronoun and then I insult them. Do you have anything to say about this? Hmm, I think um, like a genuine curiosity about people... Um, in life is a really great thing. I think um, asking people if they're willing to talk about things um, is a thing that I often do. Um, and I think like educating ourselves a whole lot before we accept back the person that's that is the thing, <laughs> the thing. I don't mean to say the thing, but is the you know the to- the person of that topic. Um, because we get awfully tired of, of educating people about, about who we are. And sometimes we're not tired and sometimes we are. So, like, definitely asking asking about uh, asking about pronouns, like, uh, what pronoun do you prefer? Um, also, you know, I've heard lots of people say, like, the what I'm going for is, is pretty obvious. You know, like, if I'm... If I'm like dressed a certain way and it looks like I'm trying to be a something, that's probably what I'm headed towards. And um, so it's complicated, and we and again, like we make mistakes, um, and it can be messy. And uh, you know, and I think the other thing is like thinking about. Well, when I talk to my friends who have been pregnant, um, they sort of talk about it. I, I find that I hear this piece around um yeah as soon as you're like you show when you're pregnant the world thinks they can put their hands on your body and tell you what to do and how to raise your child and what to do with your body yeah. all of a sudden your body is private is public property and which is you know a similar experience that uh, myself and a lot of my trans and gender queer friends have had is like as soon as somebody finds out you're trans they're they're like oh have you had surgery what's in your pants but like all these personal questions become allowed to be asked so i really think that like we can think about that before we start asking questions Mm. yeah Mm. yeah i know i've been guilty of it hey we all make a mess i know i i go up to like a transgender person who's had surgery and like do you mind if you're okay like you know can i see your parts and you know, some sometimes they say in a nice way, and then later I realize how offensive it must have sounded to them. So I don't do that anymore. Mm, so you learned, yay! <laughs> awesome. Yes, I learned. <laughs> so you mentioned that you have a poem for us. I do. I'd like to just read this poem that's about like 
earth-based spirituality and sex. Yes, please. As a way to sort of close the show. I feel really, really honored that you asked me to be on the show. This is a whole lot of, awful lot of fun um, to be with you again in this way. Uh, and so this poem is called um, The Holy Body Poem. And it was written for a... Uh, a film made by a friend of mine, a fabulous sexological body worker named Pavani More. Um, the film is called um, Holy Milf, uh, Holy Mother I'd Like to Fuck. So and this poem is called, it's an invocation to the, uh, to, uh, the elements. So it's called the Holy Body Poem. Air, I need you, I need to feel you, suck you from my lover's mouth and then fill them up again with you. Air, suspire me away, my shame, suspire away my shame as I contain you until it's almost too late, then release. Air, let's re-spirit together. Let's gasp, let's gulp, let's giggle. Let's snore, let's sneeze, let's snort, let's sniffle. Air, with you I pant, I whisper, and I heave. Guardians of the watchtowers of the east feel our body prayers of bliss and resistance. Know we conspire to respire with you. Air, help me catch my breath. Fire, I need you. I need you to feel my heat, my friction, the friction of bark on skin, on sand on skin, on fur on skin. Fire, let's snap, let's crackle, and let's pop my desire before breakfast at the rest area with a hot being in my mouth in this room right now. Fire, teach me of your ways to burn and fuck, spark, flame, fire, embers, ashes. Guardians of the watchtowers of the south feel our body prayers ablaze with glitter and irreverence. Know we alight to insurrection with you. Water, I need you in all your forms of dripping disambiguation. Water, let's drool, let's splash, let's spray, let's